Okay. This is the Philip, uh, this is the Philip from Intel, who is the maintainer of 3D CI test service, and Aka, the kernel test robot. So the robot does both runtime and the building build testing. Today, I want to share some observations and ideas of the build side. I think the build issue found by static analysis, uh, analysis tool could lead to runtime bug. Also, the build error uh, impacts the bisectability of both build and the runtime side. Uh, that's the reason we are looking for a bug-free build uh, on, the, on the main line. So talk is organized to uh, organize uh, three parts. How is the current status and the practice is kernel test Robert uh, adopt to discover issues and uh, prevent them entering the main line? Finally, to discuss the challenges and uh, look for all input that how different effort can collaborate to drive the bug free on the main line. So let's start for the for the first part. This is the quick and uh, quick simplified overview of the build test effort in the kernel community. From the bottom, the green box, there are test suites developed and maintained to test the kernel from various aspects, um, including compiling, uh, static analysis, the coding style check, and, and the other rules check. All these are considered as the build test in, in this talk. So it's about any test that doesn't need to execute the kernel. On top of that, tests are planned and executed by either a team the CI or individuals, which run when all, uh, when all some of the suites regularly and report out the status. Most of the status are in the form of the overall test results, such as pass rate, critical issues, and some may also add bisect results for the detected issues. All these are to promise the quality of the kernel uh, which has its own life cycle and uh, development, uh, development flow. Testing can occur in, in any stage, though different uh, CI may have different uh, favors. In this talk, I will share some thinking uh, about how to reduce the escape of uh, issues that, that uh, finally uh, landing on the main line. Usually for a test effort, to result in high quality, things like test cadence, frequency, the stage a test starts to involve in, coverage, uh, turnaround time are all matter. So if we look at the coverage, it could be related to how many configures were tested. And it's also related to what kind of test tools suites were executed besides the normal compiling. The diagram here shows the rough statistics for the test tools used to discover issues. Uh, currently, this is based on the commits uh, within RC1 to RC6, and the commit is counted if it is uh, if it fixes uh, an issue. So the tool and the who detects the issue are gathered based on the change log of that commit. This is not 100% uh, accurate. From the data, it shows nearly uh, one third are uh, compiling related issues, and there are also improvements around the various checks, like uh, check patch, kernel doc. For the statics and, uh, static analysis side, smash, pass, coccinel, and the coverage also play uh, important roles. Uh, one, perspective, uh, one perspective here is more fixes uh, we found on the main, uh, main line also means more issues are merged and uh, exist in, in current main line. So if we look at the current uh, and status of remaining issues on um, x86 on the RC6 release. So the statistics runs on different com configurations and only count for the unique and the high confidence issue. The issues are accumulated, so we can see there's a jump for the number when we tested with all mode or, um, or yes config. Later, the RAND configure continues to add new ones from all corners. It's hard to tell whether all issues are detected as more con uh, configures are added, the more issues could be discovered. There's also diagrams about uh, the detail category, so you can check it uh, offline if you are um, interested. Both above slides show some build issues are escaped to the main line. 
it could be caused by different reasons. For example, not all patch in the mailing list is build tested comprehensively by CI. Um, or the issue is detected on immutable branch, which could be caused by the coverage is not enough or, or the test is not um, in time before the commit is uh, merged. Also, sometimes it could be the long tail problem that some issues will happen to be discovered by random config in an unpredictable time. Um, for 3 CI side, we have uh, several goals regarding the build test. We want to discover more issues. We want to bisect the issue or to block um, the problems as early as possible. Finally, try to drive the closure of uh, issues. I think all these goals are to be done through the collaboration with the kernel community. At kernel, um, uh, uh, at the board side, the first step is the build test. And also we have the um, bisection. And finally, if the issue is valid, so developer would help to uh, resolve it. And uh, uh, actually not all issues uh, are needed to be bisected. Uh, bisection is just one of the methods to find the cause, especially for build. It uh, uh, can be fixed by going through the current code base for most cases. But we still think it's possible that the original author may have more context or confidence to fix or find out some unintended bug. So we still prefer to go through the bisection and we think bisection can be viewed as a kind of bug triage. And we can provide more information like what is the first better commit that um, introduced the issue to so, um, so to speed up the closure. We start the build test with the shift left testing. On one side, we continuously add new repos and we try to improve the success rate of generating the testable branch for the mailing list patch. In order to test uh, this large scale of branches, so we adopt the merge strategy to form a single merged branch to do build. Another side is to add appropriate uh, coverage such as more render config and extra checks. Uh, because we try to make sure these tests can take effect in the earlier stage, so to reduce the escaped issues. One challenge is the false positive detected by static analysis tools or sometimes the compiler. So the false positive could be some low confidence issue or less meaningful issues in the context of kernel Thus, the important part for us is to be uh, conservative, to have high quality reports. Uh, we try our best to mitigate the possible false positive. We have defined the rules uh, for high confidence, low confidence, and ignorable issues. So we're doing this by analyzing the input and the change log. For the low confidence ones, uh, it means it requires extra effort to do manual check. So we got a lot of support from the community, like Dan, like Julia, to filter out the meaningless uh, reports. If the first positive problem can be well resolved, we think these tools could be more um, easily deployed in any validation uh, effort. Uh, one more thing is, if the change log can clearly show or point to what the tool used, uh, what the detail error message is, this would be this would bring extra va values to the data uh, analysis. As mentioned, uh, we also have one important step that is the bisection. Uh, we, yeah, we. Uh, we think in the whole process, things could go unexpectedly wrong, which uh, actually have quite some opportunities for us to um, improve. Besides, uh, we need to check whether the issue is uh, high confidence. In order to have the variable reports, the board considered uh, a few more uh, things, such as whether the issue is already resolved in the latest head of the branch or whether it is resolved in the Linux next by the time bisection is done. Uh, 
So there are challenges that blocks the bisection to bisect effectively, uh, not to mention the build failure that hurts the bisectability. Even the bisection is correct from the perspective of detecting a change. The, the, the font commit uh, could, could be uh, not the one that we want. For example, it could be a make file change which is not the actual cause of the warning, but just expose the warning. So we pay more effort to smooth the bisection. We record the patterns of all these gaps so we can use the pattern to identify the unreliable bisection in the future reports. Sometimes we may find a way to mitigate the bisector gap so we could rerun the linked bisections. Yeah, um, basically we form a knowledge base so, so we can, can run the bisect more, uh, more smoothly. Here we got a lot of support and feedback from the test maintainers and the developer. Meanwhile, we could also see there are some bad smells that indicate certain bisection is, in, uh, is not effective. For example, like the make file change or the directory of um, or other um, scripts directory change, all the, um, all the uh, commits, if located on these places, they are suspicious. So quite, of, quite some of them can be mitigated by patching the kernel source in every run, so we can make sure the make file and the scripts change are consistent across the bisection. No matter the change is adding new compiling option or it is does some uh, bug fixes. So overall, the goal for us is to bisect more accurately and find the real um, code change that leads to the uh, warning or, or error. Of course, some cannot be simply bisect, uh, 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 mitigated. For example, existing error, uh, which changed uh, its pattern or exposed the uh, commit which fixes some blocking errors. So for now, what we do is just to try to analyze the pattern and to prevent a similar um, commit uh, reported. So we um, try to make sure the report we send out has most value. The table lists some examples for your reference. Uh, they actually are randomly picked to demonstrate uh, different problems that uh, uh, blocks the bisections. Yeah, but I, I will not go, go through them in, in detail. Um, this step is how we add the tests to make sure we can continuously drive the closure and avoid the, the regression. Basically, we have three uh, sets. One is the core tests, that is the must run. The second is the auto-generated tests and the last piece of tests is the regression test uh, suite, which we gathered from the historical fails. It's all about how we prioritize these tests. I think uh, currently we don't have a very intelligent uh, solution. For example, we expect we can understand the test coverage of build testing so we can reduce the unnecessary um, build te and test. For example, when we generate a lot of random configs, probably some of them are duplicated uh, regarding the, uh, regarding the uh, effect uh, of detecting issues. So there's pretty sorry, uh, much to in improve. Philip? Yeah, oh, I'm oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you have, uh, do, would you like to get feedback from uh, um, the people in the room? Um, oh, oh, yes. We, yeah, about, yeah, you can. we have about yeah. uh, less than five minutes now left. Oh, okay. Sorry, I, I didn't notice time. Uh, so session is, is, is only 20 minutes uh, or, or 15 minutes? Yes, yeah. It's uh, about 20 minutes of presentation, 15 to 20 minutes, and then uh, you get feedback. Um, if you have, uh, if you want to discuss something with... Uh, yeah, okay. So let me let me just uh, jump to the final two slides. 
So, so, so there are some ideas and proposals, so we can have some discussion based on that. That'll be good. great. Thank you. Okay. So we, so we see the challenges are three parts: how the change the code are testable, and uh, what are the test coverage. So we can see for testable side, mostly the problem is the the the, the mailing patch uh, fail to form the branch. And for the test coverage, the false positive, as mentioned, and also the resource pressure. Uh, the other challenge is if we enlarge or we encourage a different CI to test more, will this lead to duplicated test effort? Finally, is the bisection um, problem how we can form a consistent bisecting process? Yeah. Actually, there are seven, two slides that we think we can share some proposals. Yeah, but uh, I can leave the time to the questions now. Okay. Uh, thank you for this work. Uh, this is interesting. I have a question. You do a lot of bisection for building. Uh, what's been your experience for bisecting with testing? For us at Red Hat, it's been a struggle. Have you had more success bisecting test uh, failed tests? Yeah. So do you do you uh, refer to whether the how is the bisection success rate? Or you mean uh, uh, on I, your test? Yeah. I understand how bisection works successfully for building, but what about bisection for uh, testing. You got a lot of false positives, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, right now, yeah, for testing side, for the functionality, I think we uh, relatively doing good. Yeah, but also it depends on the scope and, uh, and, and, and what kind of tests we deployed. So there are some typical tests like kernel self tests, LTP, uh, XF tests. Yeah, most of them are, are easy to bisect. But if we talk about the other kind, like the performance set, it brings a lot of challenge for us. Even uh, even we have some automatic mechanism to detect the instability, we also require people to do a manual check. So when we got a report, we usually do certain analysis to confirm, yeah, it, it, it's a real one. So, so there are a lot of false positive, right, yeah. And okay, I think I the talk, to... talk, yeah, 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 just add one thing. Uh, here, the talk uh, try to analyze build is because build is relatively uh, easy, and for the long term, it's actually quite com uh, complex. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Anything? Oh. Yes, not exactly a question, just yeah, um, to mention, yeah, I'm from a Sysbot team, and yeah, bisection, bisecting the kernel <laughs> is a real pain because when you, it's not that every revision builds, it's not that every revision can be booted when you build it with the instrumentation. And uh, yes, if you run, if I'm, if even, even if you have a reproducer, it's not guaranteed that it will really work when you go back to history. So there are, at least on our side, we try a number of countermeasures to that, but of course it does not make the process 100% reliable, unfortunately. So it would be nice if there would be some maybe common approach, because I think it's, <coughs> it's not just for everybody doing kernel development. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Philip. Yeah, okay, thank you.